What if I am a good wife? Uh -huh. His home is clean. His kids are fed. I'm making sure they're well educated. I help them with their homework. I'm a good lover in bed. I help him with the finances. And I say, look at that. He still took a walk. Well, that's something else that's been confused about my book. I advise black men and black women. I certainly tell men that if you are with a woman who you have been with for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, 6 months, 2 weeks, whatever it is, and that woman refuses to cooperate with your ideas, does not want to get with your program of right, whatever it is, then I tell those men, get rid of that woman and get another one. And I tell black women the same thing. If you are with a man that you cannot be in agreement with, then get rid of him and get with a man that you can be in agreement with. If the man you're with is not treating you the way that you want him to and you feel that you have put in enough time to demonstrate your commitment and your sincerity of efforts to try to make the relationship work, I don't tell people to just stay in that relationship. I'm trying to teach us that we waste a lot of time being angry with each other and being dissatisfied in relationships. Get out of it and get with one where you can be happy. You say that the black woman would like to be a clone of the white woman. Many of us, yes. That's unfortunate. How do you see that? So? Well, uh, that's something that was almost accidental, I'd have to say. See, the white woman has been the only mentor that we have had of a female. We've seen her every day of our life on television, every magazine, every newspaper, uh, every commercial. You know, it's, it's just been her face, her body, her image, whatever it has been in front of us. And so today we have the results of that. We have black women who are trying to dye their hair blonde, who are wearing blue and green contacts in their eyes, you know, who wear tons and tons of layers of makeup, who have changed their voice, who have hair weaves so they can have flowing long hair just blowing in the wind, you know, like uh, 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 Brooke Shields or somebody, you know. And so that's been an accident. And as a result of us doing that, we have also adopted the women's liberation movement goals of wanting to be liberated from the man and have some kind of pseudo-equality. When while that may be true of the white woman and her plight with the white man, that's not really the black woman's business because we haven't been under the control of the black man for over 500 years. So what do we have to be liberated from him from? Is, but is there something wrong with trying to make yourself look better or more uh, well, appealing? Well, it depends on what standard you're using as being the goal of looking better. Hmm. You know, if we think to look better is to put on a ton of makeup and have blue eyes, then there's something wrong with that, you know. But if we think that to look better is to certainly get a better spirit in our heart and uh, to work every day to become a better wife, a better mother, better friend, better sister, then those values and attributes alone will make us more beautiful than we are now. How do you feel about the fact that... Um Many people accuse you of wanting to see the black woman at a point of submission. Is that where you want to see a black woman in the 1990s? Well, it depends on how you define submission. Those words uh, have a tendency to have a negative connotation for us because of how they were used against us during slavery and what we connect them true to. But actually, the kind of submission that I'm referring to just means cooperation and agreement. Uh, I don't think that anybody could say that I represent a woman who is subjugated in any kind of way. I don't think that anybody could say that my personality sounds like some man has me somewhere crawling around on the ground or walking ten paces behind him. So I'm not representing that. I'm representing strength. I'm saying that we have a lot of power. We have power to make heaven and hell for our men. And I'm saying let's try making heaven. Let's try to build him up. If a man has his woman behind him, he will believe he can do anything. And all we need to do is to get our men to believe that they can do anything. And he'll be able to, you know, do much better than he's doing now and come out of the pitiful condition he's in. As I said, I'm not exonerating him. I'm just saying that all of that strength that we have, let's use it in a more positive way instead of just going for self. You know, nobody told us that all of that being my own person and I'm independent would lead to separation and loneliness. But that's what we had to trade for that in order to have certain kinds of success. We had to give up the man because uh, we can't find a man who will compete with us on that level. Uh, as I said, we say he can't handle us or he's intimidated by the fact I make more money than him. Uh, I think that by judging our men on how much money he makes, uh, we have lost a lot of good men. Because as black women, if we decide that all of us are going to just determine whether or not we're going to have a man based on how much money he makes, then well, none of us have no man. Because most black, women don't, black men don't have no money. There are many men <laughs> not out there. a lot of money. <laughs> there are many men out there who don't want a woman. That's absolutely true. Who is uh, not gainfully employed. Th that's Just true. Just works both ways. And uh, one of the things that I have always explained about that, Raven, is that 
for my lectures, which you know I do all over the country so I can uh, give black people some ease and take some hysteria out of our communities that the book seems to have caused.